Hello, thank you so much for joining our session today. I am one of three presenters and I will be introducing CSU Online, CSU Extended Campus, and my three presenters, who I am Alicia Tino. We also have Resmuel Parvez and Brandy Gonzalez, who are going to be joining me in this session. We are coming to you to present at Colt. Yay! And we are from CSU Online. So today we're going to be talking to you about assessing student perception and program need on higher education environment on Northeastern Colorado Casey. And we are only with you about 10, 12 minutes today. So this is going to be fairly brief. If you want more information, uh, we will have our email addresses so that you can reach out to us if you do want to learn more. So thank you very much. And um, let's get started. This is our brief agenda. I'm not gonna spend too much time here. We can all read. And this is where we're going today. So um, we're gonna start with who we are, what we do, program vetting, program qualification, Northeastern Colorado um, needs analysis in particular. We're gonna talk to you about our methods for answering the questions that we were tasked with. And then some brief steps limitations of the study and some results. So CSU Extended Campus and CSU Online is a part of CSU Extended Campus. We focus on the four credit online education. I am our Associate Director of College Relations and Program Strategy. I'm the lead for our College Relations and Program Strategy team, as well as our academic advising team and our course scheduling and enrollment. Teams. I'm going to move this so that you can see what course scheduling and enrollment actually does. So we have a finance team. We have marketing, IT, web, recruitment. Um, again, like I said, college relations and program strategy, course development and training. Our instructional designers are over there, academic advising, and then course scheduling and enrollment. We have been in existence for over 50 years, and we work the Fort Collins campus of CSU under the CSU system umbrella. So that's who we are and kind of where, why we do what we do, very brief because we don't have much time to talk today. Um, this is a little bit more about who is going to be speaking to you today. So Reswinol Parvez, he is our market and strategic analyst, also in our college relations program strategy team. Brandy Gonzalez is our high school and community college relationship coordinator. And I am the associate director of college relations and program strategy. Thank you for that introduction, Alicia. Uh, as Alicia mentioned, I'm Brandi Gonzalez with CSU Online. I am a Relationship Manager for High School and Community College Partnerships. Um, and so now we're going to look at the internal program qualifications. Uh, what, pro what qualifications do we look for when we're determining if, um, you know, programs are certain, are, are viable in communities and um, if they're going to do well? So we're going to look at um, four, four questions that we primarily ask, but the surface of it is what happens when a department wants to offer a program, but you're not sure if there's enough students for it. Um, we also look at when a community wants location-based higher education in their communities, and how do we qualify these leads? Um, we also look at how we create programs that are differentiated. Um, and we also look at what is the perception of our institution in that community? Thank you, Brandy. So the concept to launch process, we involve research, uh, curriculum assessment, market and uh, analysis, uh, market analysis and competitor research. We also take into account our department needs and the mission of our departments and our university, CSU Extended Campus. Um, and then we also do an ROI analysis and enrollment projections. So based upon the amount of time and energy we're going to put into this, what does the market actually look like and what are what students are actually going to come to us for this program? How many students are there? Is the market saturated? Is um, are there other people with northern Colorado or within the online space offering this similar program? Things like that. Thank you, Alicia and Brandy and um, welcome the cult audience. Uh, welcome to our session. Um, as you already heard from Alicia and Brandy, why are we doing this, who we are, and I'm Rezwanul Parvez. I do market research for the college relation and program strategy team with Colorado State University Extended Campus. And as you heard that our key goal of this research is to establish a two plus two 
partnership with the uh, community stakeholders, community partners, and um, to identify the student demand, what the student want, what's their career goal look like, and uh, what are their what are the deciding factors they choose an academic institution for their future career growth. So before we launch any kind of program, we do the program vetting. We carefully examine all, all the indicators before launching a new program and you use data from multiple secondary sources. We use data from economic modeling warehouse. We use data from institutional research database. We use data from Hanover research data simulator lab. We use data from integrated post-secondary education data warehouse and also National Center for Education Statistics. And our primary survey data, we also added our primary quality survey data and also the secondary survey to perform these analysis. Thank you, Razwan. So to assess the student perception and program need in the higher education environment, we conducted a voluntary and anonymous student survey within five high schools um, and two community colleges in Northeastern uh, Sterling, Colorado region. This case study was designed and developed to analyze the Northeastern Colorado region students' needs, as well as identify the student perceptions of Colorado State University, and finally to investigate the demand for a two plus two program in agriculture. And our methodology, as you see, uh, we built an administered and Qualtrics survey to assess student perception in Northeastern Colorado. And uh, the primary survey data came from the Qualtrics survey. And we talked and we communicated to multiple academic institutions, including community colleges and high schools. Um, to get uh, data from the students, to see, to identify students' perception, to examine their needs, and um, to um, identify their future career goals, and secondary data from Economic Modeling Warehouse, Hanover Research. And we use a qualitative survey analysis, and also we added a quantitative component to it. And we reached out to almost close to more than 1,000 people, and we have total completed responses from the quality survey is 150. We wish we could get more completed responses. However, 150 is a decent sample size for doing any kind of economic or statistical or community need analysis. So prior con to conducting the student survey, we interviewed six high schools and two community colleges within the Northeastern Colorado region. Uh, in those interviews, we met with an internal representative for each of those academic institutions to gain information pertaining uh, to their perceptions of CSU within their institutions. And we also received student population data, such as the student body of their junior and senior classes, uh, their graduation rates, and a rough estimate of their population of students that are considering to continue on uh, to complete their education after they leave high school. Uh, these interviews were key to assisting us with linking the quantitative findings from the student survey to qualitative information as we began to identify possible program areas of interest. And from the key findings, um, so thank you, Brandy, for sharing your findings. And here is the survey findings that we received uh, from our Qualtrics survey. Um, according to the respondents, um, the top three factors before the considering an academic institution for their future career is on top is definitely the cost of education. And our, our findings is also supported by Wiley Education Services report. And there are some other education report that we received. And also they mentioned the same thing that the topmost factor for any student is the cost of education. And also the, another topmost factor is the quality of instruction provided at the academic institution. And from our survey, students um, think the quality of instruction provided by CSCU it is definitely, um, they are happy with the quality of instruction provided. And definitely if they get any kind of help from the Career and Network Center or at, at CSU, 
uh, how to get a job after graduation, or any kind of information, how the job market looked like, how they should apply, how they write their cover letter, resume, and any kind of advising help, mentoring help regarding getting a job. That's another topmost factor from a survey analysis. This is pretty much from our side in terms of findings and methodology and feel free to reach out to us, any of our co-authors, if you have any questions about the survey methodology, about the survey instrument, about the findings and what went well for us, how should we uh, do something different in the near future from this, what's the learning lesson from it. And Thank you, Brandy and Reswan. So now that you've found out about our needs analysis, who we are, um, wanted to let you know the limitations of this study and then the next steps with us for not only this particular needs analysis, but then um, program vetting in general. So for this particular needs analysis, we had a low number of survey responses. So this could have been due to COVID. It could have been due to uh, when we were actually able to reach out to them. It could be the fact that we had to go through the counselors and we couldn't actually reach out and speak to or email the students themselves. So we had to go through the counselors at the particular schools and then the email went out from there. Um, and then we need to ensure more visibility. We, we know that uh, from this study, from this analysis um, of Colorado State University overall throughout Colorado, that's kind of a big takeaway from this. Um, from here, we're going to do a discussion with our internal and external stakeholders, including the College of Agricultural Sciences, CAS. I know you all don't know what that means. Um, so, and our institutional partners. So that would be our high schools, our community colleges that we actually worked with. We'll give them a digest of what this actually was, um, what we feel are the next steps and then have a conversation. And then we're gonna communicate our findings and suggestions for further engagement and research. And that's kind of um, how we end these types of analyses. We let people know what, what we're finding, what our suggestions are, and then um, for this particular one, others are probably going to take it further. Since we were just trying to vet a particular program and um, our scope was a little bit more narrow, others might take the scope a little bit further, and that is just fine. So that is what we have for you today. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. If you would like to reach out to us, um, you're welcome to do so. Our emails should be within the presentation um, materials when you're clicking through the Colt site. Uh, we really appreciate you taking the time and uh, bye.